Hey, viewers, uh, live viewers, I apologize. Uh, we have some bad weather here in Georgia and it went out. Welcome back, Tammy. Uh, Miriam, God bless you. Welcome back. Share and invite your followers. Hey, Amen. If you're first time here, let us know your name and where you're from. I apologize. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it is literally like snowing, raining, sleet outside. You know, it's overcast here in Georgia. So, you know, Periscope just went out. It's been doing this all day. So y'all forgive me. Share and invite your followers. We're going to continue in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I was just given a summation, verses 3 through 5. Amen. Praise God. This is really like part four. I keep forgetting to put what part it is. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? This is part four. Amen. Share and invite your followers. Tap on the screen. Give me a love offering of 500 hearts. Amen. Pray for my strength in the Lord and for everyone whom the Lord has ordained to be here. So we ask you, Lord, the prayer that we prayed previously, uh, let it come forth and open up the airwaves that there be no hindrances to this scope going forth and in the replay. Amen. Praise God. In Jesus Christ's name, we ask and pray. Amen. Can we get some participation? You don't need to be ashamed. Come on, Tammy. Speak to me, Maria. Come on. It's very rude to come to somebody's house and not speak. You know what I'm saying? Do something. Testify to the truth. Share and invite your followers. Anyway, so as I was uh, ministering in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 about honoring God with our bodies and sanctification and honor, Thank you, Sister Miriam. Thank you for being here. Share and invite your followers. God bless you, your family, your bloodline as well. Can I get you to share and invite your followers? Do you know how to do that? Hmm? I thank you for letting your presence be known. Tap that screen. Yes, I do. Well, we appreciate if you can do that. we Will do. Amen. We appreciate if you can do that. Yeah, I can see what you're doing here. You know, if you're speaking or sharing or inviting somebody or whatever, I can see. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Anyway, so as I was just saying, you know, I was uh, ministering and saying, you know, uh, you know, Scripture is teaching us here is that when uh, it says uh, sexual sexual involvement. Thank you for inviting. Thank you for sharing on Twitter. Amen. God bless you and your family bloodline and everybody who's going to see this broadcast by you sharing it. Amen. God bless you hundredfold. Sexual involvement outside of marriage dishonors God. Welcome back, our dear sister. If you're having problems, close your other apps and make sure your Wi-Fi is on. Amen. Sexual involvement outside of marriage dishonors God, one's marriage partner. OK, if you're married, if we're not married, we having sex outside of marriage. We dishonor God. If we if some of us are married and we have sex outside of the marriage covenant, that is dishonoring your, your uh, part, marriage partner. And if you have marriage with someone, you know, what I'm saying who is not, you know what I'm saying, your wife or husband, you, we are then that's considered to be sinning or dishonoring uh, the uh, the future spouse of that person, of that woman or of that man, a woman having sex with a man, a man having sex with a woman that's not their uh, wife or husband, you know what I'm saying? That's dishonoring whom God has ordained, you know what I'm saying, to be that woman's husband, to be that man's wife. We're sinning against them. And then we wonder why some of us, that why our marriage partners haven't showed up, that God haven't brought us to us. Because the word say, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man sow, that shall he reap. For he that sow to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sow to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. We, some of us are reaping what we're sowing. That's why our, our wives are not coming. God is not revealing them to us. That's why, you know what I'm saying, uh, sisters, that, you know what I'm saying, God's not revealing your husband, especially if you're sleeping with somebody else, else's husband, and ain't got to be married. You're sleeping against somebody else's future spouse. We got to stop living these selfish and self-centered lives because we reap what we sow. And guess what? Somebody probably out there sleeping with your, you know what I'm saying, your wife whom God has ordained for you to be with, man, brother in Christ, man of God, you know what I'm saying? Somebody out there, you know what I'm saying, sleeping with your husband, sister in Christ, woman of God. If you're sleeping with somebody else's, that's not yours. See, you will reap what you sow. See, it says, for whatsoever a man sow, that and only that shall they reap. See, no, you ain't heard that revelation before. Or, you know what I'm saying, if you have, can anybody testify to the truth? But let's go on to verse, uh, I believe, 6. He goes on to say that no one of you should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. In this matter of dishonoring God and with our bodies, having sexual 
relations outside of the marriage covenant, outside of the marriage covenant, those who are married. My God, I'm trying to get this thing to stay. It keeps slipping off. Y'all bear with me. Let me take it off the charge. I think it's charged enough. And uh, Pastor 510, welcome back. God bless you. Amen. Oh, come on. I tell you, the devil don't want, he don't want this. Uh-uh, no profanity. If you do that, you're going to get blocked. You know what I'm saying? So you've been warned. You've been warned. No profanity. You will get blocked. So you're welcome to be here. But if you know what I'm saying? If you come in to distract us and be a troll and use profanity and disrespect, you know what I'm saying, uh, the spirit of the Lord, then we just had no other choice but to pray for you and block you. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand. Sorry, I'm French. Okay. What is it that you don't understand? What is your name first? Let's start by there. My name is Tracy Smith. Okay. What is your name? You must block the enemy of our souls. Yes, that's true. But let's see if we know what I'm saying we can turn our enemy into a friend. Marion. God bless you, Marion. Thank you for being here from all the way from France or you're French. What is it? What is it that you don't understand? Ask the question. And I'm going to ask your question. Is it pertaining to what we're speaking about right now? How you doing, Vince? God bless you. Welcome. Are you a born again Christian? Where are you from? Share and invite your followers. Welcome back, brother uh, Angel Delgado. So you don't understand what? Every... Talos, I don't understand that. Every, every what? I don't understand what you're saying. Can you speak in English? Sorry, I lost the connection. You're not the only one. I lost the connection too. I had to rebroadcast. Uh, who is that? Tri trial, random, random trial. How you doing, Lord Jesus Christ today? What is your name? We're in First Thessalonians chapter four, verses one through eight. We on verse six. Verse six. If you have a Bible, you know what I'm saying. Open up your Bible, and we will teach you. Okay. If you have an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying, you will have understanding. Open up your Bibles to First, First Thessalonians. It's after Colossians in the New Testament. Okay, you have First Thessalonians, and then you have Second Thessalonians. We're in First Thessalonians, chapter four. We're covering verses one through eight. Right now, we're on verse six. So open up your Bibles. If you have any questions pertaining to this. Uh, subject matter, we will gladly answer your questions. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Goes on to say, he says, uh, hmm, verse six. Where is it at? Let me find you. Oh, that no one of you, he's speaking to the Thessalonians and he's speaking to the believers, that we should not take advantage of, take advantage of and defraud our brother and sisters in Christ in this matter, in the matter of, you know what I'm saying, uh, committing fornication or immorality or committing adultery, you know what I'm saying, sexual sin. Because when we sin, have sex outside of uh, marriage, we are sinning against God. We're sinning against our body, which is God's Holy Spirit. We dishonoring God. And if we are some of us who are married and have a sex outside the marriage covenant, then you're sinning against your marriage partner. And then if you're single or married and having sex with somebody else, you're sinning and dishonoring that person whom God, you know, what I'm saying has ordained to be with that woman, to be with that man. That's not your wife. That's not your husband. We are sinning against them and defrauding them from getting their mate in, in virginity to get in a pure vessel. You know what I'm saying? That's what he says. He says, uh, and that no one of you should take advantage of just because we have the opportunity to, you know what I'm saying, that our brothers and sisters, they may be, you know what I'm saying, a little weak in their flesh and lust is overcoming them. And we, and you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? We should not take advantage of our brothers and sisters in Christ. You know what I'm saying? By sleeping with their husbands and sleeping with their wives and sleeping with their future husbands and sleeping with their future wives. We should not defraud them from having a, 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 a pure, you know what I'm saying, vessel in holiness. You know what I'm saying? So that they can have their bride, they can have their groom in purity. How would you feel? If God, you know what I'm saying, has ordained somebody to be your wife and ordained somebody to be your husband and somebody else going out there sleeping with them. You know what I'm saying? They're defrauding you from getting your mate in purity. See? No one of you should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. In this matter. And I'm going to try to break that down to give some more understanding. Y'all bear with me. 
You know what I'm saying? Just because we have the opportunity, the sister, she weak in her flesh. Don't take advantage of her. Matter of fact, say, you know, sister, you know, I can see that you're vulnerable. You went through a, a breakup right now. You don't say, I'll pray for you and like that. But you know what I'm saying? We don't need to be touching and hugging and kissing or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Are you going, you separated. You're not even divorced. We don't need to be dating or courting or nothing like that. I'll pray for you that God will heal your marriage. Or if it's not, you know what I'm saying? That, you know what I'm saying? That you will be able to move on in peace. When you get your healing, be restored, then you'll be ready to be with whom God was a day for you to be. I'm not going to take advantage of, you, advantage of you in your vulnerability. A lot of people do that who don't know the gospel. Not only that, he's speaking to Christians, brother. He says, listen, open up your Bible. You know what I'm saying? We ain't just talking about unbelievers. You know what I'm saying? He says that no one of you, he's talking to the Thessalonians. He's talking to born again Christians. You know what I'm saying? No one of you, no born again Christian should take advantage of or defraud his brother or sister in Christ in this matter. Why? Because the Lord is the avenger of all such. God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. And some of that is going to be, you know what I'm saying, going to let you get a, a, a venereal disease. Okay? He will repay. He will allow you to get a, a, a disease of AIDS. He will repay. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. You know what I'm saying? It said the word said God will judge his people. Don't think God won't judge you. You know what I'm saying? We think that God just going to judge the um, unbelievers. No, the scripture said that God will judge his people. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 13. That's what he says. Hebrews chapter 13. Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed is undefiled. But whoremongers, fornicators, and adulterers, God will judge. What's up, man? I'm very well in the Lord Jesus Christ today. What is your name? Are you a born again Christian? Where are you from? Share and invite your followers. We're in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 8. See? We don't think God will judge us. God will judge his people. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sow, that and only that shall they reap. And I want to bring that out some more. You know what I'm saying? Let me see in the Amplified Version. In that particular scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 6. What does it say there? Y'all bear with me. Like I said, open up your Bibles. You know what I'm saying? I always come here with an open Bible, a pen, and a pad, so you can go back and search the scriptures to see if those things are so, which we are speaking, teaching, and preaching, and exhorting in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Don't take my word for it. God will judge everyone in all things that we do. Amen. Judgment will start in the house of God. Exactly. Amen. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. So we lost the fear of God and keep his commandments. For God will bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or evil. Okay? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Okay? Oh, Thessalonians. Let me go and read that in Amplified Version. Because I know I read it somewhere. Well, it might be in my, um, uh, uh, my commentary. Y'all bear, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. I'm going to bring out some more understanding of this verse 6. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 6. Let me go ahead and read it in the Amplified Version. Okay? And it reads, That no man transgress. That no man transgress. And overreach. So you're going past your boundaries that God has established. Overreach his brother. And defraud him, his brother, in this matter. Or defraud his brother or sister in business. But what if you struggle with a sin? What do you mean, what if you struggle with a sin? You go to God. You say, Lord, I'm struggling with this sin. You know what I'm saying? But I know you gave me power over sin. I admit to you, Lord, you know what I'm saying? I'm having a problem, you know what I'm saying? With the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. We confess our sins, and God is faithful to forgive us our sins. You know what I'm saying? The word says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. You are without excuse. What if it was out of your control? Oh, nothing is not out of control. That's what this message says. He said, each one of you should know how to control his own body in sanctification and in honor. The only way it's out of your control if you're a sinner and you're not born again of the Holy Spirit. You don't have no control 
over the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the power of life, or temptation. All you have is willpower, and willpower will fail you. But if you've been born again the Holy Spirit, you without excuse. No, what if someone raped you? Well, if somebody raped you, that was something that was done unto you. Yes, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you've been raped, you know what I'm saying? You can go to God and God can heal you and restore your purity. Don't yell too much, bro. You're vocal. Thank you very much, bro. You're right. Thank you. Thank you for putting me in remembrance of that. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to be insensitive. You know what I'm saying? If you've been raped, taken advantage of, like it says, you've been defrauded from your purity, you can go to God and say, Lord, help me to forgive those who rape me. Okay? And I ask you to reach Lord to, you know, heal me of my, you know what I'm saying, my, uh, you know what I'm saying, my, my pain, you know what I'm saying, that I've suffered. Heal me and make me whole and give me your peace and restore my purity. And God will do that. He will do that. So, Lord, we ask and pray for those who have been raped, who've been defrauded, who've been taken advantage of spiritually mentally, in their wills, and their emotions, and their bodies. We ask you, Lord, to put it in their hearts, Lord, to forgive their persecutors, those who have taken advantage of them, Lord. Help them to forgive them, Lord. And we ask you, Lord, to restore them in mind, body, soul, and spirit, and in truth. Give them your peace and make them whole and restore them to their purity. Restore unto them the joy of your salvation. In Jesus Christ's name, we ask and pray. All those in agree with that prayer, type amen. Share and invite your followers. Yes, I used to be addicted to pornography. Yes, and God delivered me. It's not your fault that you were raped or taken advantage of. Exactly. Yes, sister, I used to be addicted to pornography. I used to be addicted to committing fornication. You know what I'm saying? Far as sleeping with other people, committing adultery, sleeping with somebody that's not my wife, or, you know, masturbation. You know what I'm saying? Watching television shows, you know what I'm saying, that's showing, you know what I'm saying, adultery, fornication, you know what I'm saying, all that stuff. How did how how you get over it? I repented. The uh, the Holy Spirit convicted my heart of sin. I turned from my sin. You know what I'm saying? I went to God. I confessed my sin. I asked the Lord to uh, that I sinned, and I asked Him to forgive me of my sins. That He was faithful just to forgive me my sins. And you know what I'm saying? He created me a clean heart, and He renewed a right spirit within me, and He wiped the slate clean, and he made me whole. Now, every day I make a conscious decision to dedicate my spirit, my whole spirit, my whole mind, my whole will, my emotions, and my body into God. I dedicate myself to God, and through the power of his Holy Spirit, I have victory over the world, my own flesh, and the devil. And I thank God for it. And I give him all the praise and glory. And I also thank him for my brothers and sisters in Christ, you know what I'm saying, who has uh, encouraged me and built me up in my most holy faith to stay faithful and obedient to God like uh, Paul is doing to the Thessalonians. But what if you go back after you have asked for forgiveness? Then the word says, uh, if you go back, then you haven't repented. Just acknowledging and confessing your sins is not repentance. Repentance means turn from your sin, you know what I'm saying, turn to God, you know what I'm saying, and forsake your sin. Don't go back to it, you know what I'm saying? But if you do backslide and go back to it, you might not, you know what I'm saying, you confess to God, he'll favor just to forgive you. If you're sincere, God forgive you. But if you go right back to it, you haven't even repented. You know what I'm saying? You just confessed it to God, you but you haven't repented. So if you haven't repented, then you know what I'm saying? You're not delivered. That's like holding on to your sin and going to God. Say, God, forgive me of this sin. Okay, God, say, I'll forgive you. Now let it go. Uh, no, no, I'm just acknowledging I just sinned. I, I'm about to go get, get my freak on right now, okay? No after some months. Okay, after some months, that's mean backsliding. That means you backslide. That means you fail to dedicate yourself unto God every day and ask him for his Holy Spirit to keep you. You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. And if we backslide, which we already backslide, I'm not saying just you, but if we should do that, that's called backsliding. We're going back after a few months of being forgiving, healed, delivered, cleansed from it, you know what I'm saying, set free from it, you know what I'm saying? But then if we go back to it, that's called backsliding. You know what I'm saying? We can't blame God on that. We can't blame the devil. 
The word said each man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. And when lust have conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin brings, forth, you know, it's finished, it brings forth death. It's like uh, a man and woman, you know, saying having sex of uh, in marriage, and uh, they conceive, they have sexual intercourse, and he get the sperm, and she receive it. They conceive, she conceives, and after nine months, she brings forth a baby. You know what I'm saying? For there are scriptures for backsliding. The scripture for backsliding is, you know what I'm saying? Repent, turn. You know what I'm saying? Go to God, confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh my God, I can be in prayer and then hours later I'll be in hate. Be in, be, be in something else. I hate it. Really? Well, sounds so like you, you need deliverance. I mean, you say you can be in prayer. I'm trying to understand where you're coming from. How you gonna be in prayer, and then you th you you in hate, you know what I'm saying, or whatever, and what in the same, you know what I'm saying? Explain that to me. Are you you know you put it out there again? I wait for you to type it. Take your time and put out your full thought. I wait. I wait for you. Go ahead and put your full thought out there. If you are doing two and three texts, go ahead and put your full thought, and I wait. We want to understand you. That no man transgress and overreach his brother and defraud him in this matter or defraud his brother in business. So even in business relations, OK, we should not be taking advantage of our brothers in business. For the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we have already warned you solemnly and told you plainly. I'll be a uh, prayer. Then I was later. I'll be in sin. Uh, you'll be in prayer, and then hours later, you'll be in sin. Well, I'm not saying that we don't. We could be in prayer. We dedicate ourselves, dedicate ourselves unto the Lord. And then if we're not guarding our hearts with all diligence, if we're not, you know, saying guarding our minds, you know what I'm saying, like that, if we're not presenting our bodies, if we're not being following the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit, you know what I'm saying? Yes, temptation will come from without you know what I'm saying? And if we don't, you know what I'm saying? If we haven't submitted our spirits, minds, will, emotions, and our bodies unto God, when temptation come, you're not going to have the power of the Holy Spirit to resist the devil or to resist the, the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, the temptation. You know what I'm saying? There's no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, will not allow you to be tempted above that which you're able, but will with the temptation make a way for you to escape. You got to take the escape right. You got to flee fornication. You got to flee giving into that temptation. You don't have to obey it. Are you born again of the Holy Spirit? That's the question we need to ask you, sister. You know what I'm saying? Are you born again of the Holy Spirit? That's it. Escape. Are you born again of the Holy Spirit? Because it seems like, you know what I'm saying, you're not dependent on the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, I am. Okay, Renee, sister Renee, you're born again of the Holy Spirit. Well, then you have to submit to the Spirit. There's only way you're going to be able to resist, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 temptation, the temptation to give and to sin. You, sin and temptation don't have no power over you. Only time we were given to it is if we are giving place to it. That's what the Bible said. Give no place to the devil. You know what I'm saying? Give no place to these corrupting influences that's coming to us through TV, media, to do songs. You know what I'm saying? We have to do our part. God is faithful. He gives us everything we need pertaining to life and the godliness. We just can't sit by by osmosis and think we're going to be, you know what I'm saying, full of the spirit, walk in the spirit, be led in the spirit. We have to be intentional that when temptation comes from without, you know what I'm saying, we should resist it, outlast it, you know what I'm saying, endure it, and it would dissipate. We will get stronger in the spirit, you know what I'm saying? So when the temptation comes, it will be a light thing. You know what I'm saying? It will roll off our backs like water rolling off the, the feathers of a duck. It will have no place. Jesus said, the prince of this world is coming and he doesn't have anything in me. The only thing the devil could try to hook you with, you know what I'm saying? You got to have something to hook on to. You know what I'm saying? So we have to, you know what I'm saying, get our hearts right. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Out of the heart proceeds adultery and fornication and theft. We need to get our heart right. The devil should have nothing, no place in our minds, our spirits, our will, our emotions, or in our heart. That's all I got to say about that. I answered that. 
So he says, as we have already forewarned you and solemnly told you plainly, he already warned them and people have to continually be warned. We're telling you this. We're warning you. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever man so that will he reap. He that sought to his flesh, shall the flesh reap corruption unto death. And he that sought to his flesh, I mean, sir, to the spirit, shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. You know what I'm saying? We not only have to give you the full counsel of God, we have to give you the warning of the wrath of God and the judgment that is to come for all those who reject, you know what I'm saying? God, his grace, his mercy, his love, and his salvation. We have to warn you plainly. Be not deceived. Verse 7. For God has not called us to impurity. You know what I'm saying? That's the opposite of purity, of holiness, of sanctification. He hasn't called us to impurity. God didn't set us aside and say, okay, I save you so you can be set aside for my purpose and my use, but you know, go ahead and um, be impure. Go ahead and commit fornication. Go ahead and commit adultery. You know, go ahead and do all the works of the flesh. You know what I'm saying? We haven't been called to these things. We are not to deliver to do these things because these things will bring us back into bondage. For God has not called us to impurity. He calling us to purity, sanctification, and holiness in honor. Amen. Praise God. He says, for God has not called us to impurity, but to consecration. That is to dedicate ourselves to the, mo to the most thorough purity. See? Consecration, dedication, sanctifi sanctification. Okay? He hasn't called us to impurity, but he's called us to consecration, which is to dedicate ourselves to the most thorough purity. That's what he says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I'm begging you like he's begging the Thessalonians. I beg you by the in light of the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, which is your spiritual act of worship. And do not be conformed to this world. Don't let the world shape you and press you into its mold. You know what I'm saying? In this way of thinking, living, and doing. you saying it's hard sometimes. It's hard because you're not submitted unto God. You're not dedicating yourself unto the Lord fully. That's what makes it hard. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to deal with that. Hold up, sister. That's what we're talking about. If you dedicate yourself fully to the Lord, then the Lord gives you his power of his Holy Spirit. God don't tell us to be holy or you shall be holy for I am holy. And he don't give you what you need to comply with the commandment. We are without excuse because we are not fully submitting our whole spirit, our whole mind, our whole body, our whole uh, soul, which is our mind, our wills and our emotions. You know what I'm saying? Some of us are self-willed and rebellious. We are, rebe we are quenching the Holy Spirit. He said, do not quench the Holy Spirit. Despise not prophesying. That's why the word says in James 4, submit to God. All your spirit, your mind, your will, your emotions, and your body, submit it all to God. Then you will be empowered with the Holy Spirit to resist the devil, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It will flee from you. It has no power over you. So we are without excuse. It's too hard. Nothing is too hard with God. All things are possible with God. We have to stop using ex an excuse as a crutch. God has not called us unto it, called us to impurity, but to consecration, to dedicate ourselves to the most thorough purity. And if you're not doing that, yes, it will be hard because willpower alone will fail you. You know what I'm saying? Self-willed willpower. You can't do this by willpower. You have to do this in the power of the Holy Spirit. No, I haven't always been strong in the Lord, the power of his might. I'm not judging or condemning you, sister. 
I'm just at a place where I'm fully de endeavoring to obey God's commandment, to dedicate myself every day, my whole spirit, mind, will, emotions, and body unto God, and to live a life, you know what I'm saying, pleasing unto the Lord. So you're getting there. There's no getting there. You're either there or you're not there. You know what I'm saying? Stop making excuses. You, you know what I'm saying? You're saying that God is not able to keep you. That's what you're saying. You say, oh, I'm getting, I'm not there. Well, 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 you're here right now. Confess, make your confession to God. If you confess your sins, he has faith and justice, forgive your sins, that cleanse you from all unrighteousness. It's gone, it's cleansed. You have a clean slate. Now you're going to come and say, oh, but I can't take the next step. I can't go from here. Then that means you're in the flesh. That means you haven't repented. You haven't fully submitted or dedicated your life to God. You're saying that God's power is impotent to keep you. Oh, you're making all these excuses. It's hard. Yeah, without God. But if nothing is hard without God, you're making excuses. And I have no, you know what I'm saying, no allowances because I'm giving you, God is giving you everything that you need pertaining to life and the godliness. You don't have no excuses. You are without excuse. Exactly, sister. No excuses. Just make a conscious dedication to fully dedicate all your capacities unto the Lord. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And follow the leading and power of the Holy Spirit. And whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Ask God to help you to do it in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's what the Holy Spirit is for. He's your comforter. He's your standby. You know what I'm saying? He's your rear guard. You know what I'm saying? He helps you put on the forearm of God. He helps you to obey the will of God. You know what I'm saying? For without me, he said, you can't do nothing. So you have to submit and dedicate yourself to the Lord in your most thorough purity. Exactly. He will help you. Well, keep asking. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. You know what I'm saying? For everyone that asks, receive. Everyone that seeks, find. Everyone that knocks, the door shall be open. If you been evil, know how to give gifts, give gifts unto your children. How much more shall your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? What are you asking God for? Some material stuff? Ask for His Holy Spirit. Because He's the keeper. Can't do it by yourself. I'm not rebuking you, sister. Verse 8. We're about to conclude. He says, Therefore, whoever disregards. Don't disregard this or make no excuse, sister, because he's going on. He's bringing the final consummation to this. He says, therefore, whoever disregards that is set aside and rejects this, this word, okay, this commandment of the Lord, you know, okay, whoever rejects this disregards not man, but God, you are, we are rejecting God. If we try to make excuses and justify our sin, if we disregard, you know what I'm saying, the commandment of God, we're setting aside, rejecting it. We're not setting aside rejecting man. You're not setting aside rejecting me. If you leave here, don't take heed to this. You know what I'm saying? You are rejecting God, who, whose very Holy Spirit, whom he gives to us, is holy, chaste, and pure. So you're rejecting God. The Lord, the commandment of the Lord and the person of the Holy Spirit, which is able to keep you. You don't have to make no excuse. Don't reject it. Because you're not rejecting man. You're rejecting God who has given unto us his Holy Spirit. And if you reject God, you're rejecting the Lord. You're rejecting the Lord. You're rejecting his Holy Spirit. You're rejecting his Holy Spirit. You're rejecting the will of uh, the word of God. And you're rejecting the word of God. You're rejecting the will of God. You're outside of the will of God then. That's what he said in verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Don't reject it. The word says despise not prophesying. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. That's what God gives you the Holy Spirit to keep you, to help you, to empower you to have victory over the world, the fleshly and carnal appetites, and the devil has fallen in it. A devil uh, fallen. Uh, angels and demons. Stop rejecting the Holy Spirit. Stop quenching the Holy Spirit. Stop making excuses. God giving us everything pertaining to life and the godliness. It's not hard. Yeah, we try to do it without God. Jude. Jude said, uh, verse 20, but you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, 
praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them, snatching them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Now unto him, what about the word that says, I do what I don't want to do? With it? Okay, that's Paul. I get to that. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. God is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless without fault before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. And she's speaking about, she just asked the question when Paul said, you know what I'm saying, what I, uh, I want to do right, you know what I'm saying, but I don't do it. He says, no longer I, but sin that dwelleth in me. That is the sin principle, okay? It's not an excuse, though. It's not an excuse. It is not an excuse. Uh, verse 14, Romans chapter 7, verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I, let me get it in. Because this that's that's a King James Version I was just reading that out of. Let me go and read that out of Romans chapter 7. Uh, I'm actually finished, but I'm going to see if I can just touch this on. It says a conflict between two natures. That's what it said in Galatians. That's what I don't even really even get to that. That that just told me the title that says the conflict between two natures. There's a conflict true enough going on. You know what I'm saying? Well how do we solve you know what I'm saying? Solve this conflict. You saw see scripture support scripture. Galatians chapter five he says uh in verse 13 for brethren, sisters, you have been called unto liberty. You've been called unto freedom. Freedom from the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Freedom from the devil and his fallen angels. You know what I'm saying? Free to obey God. You've been called unto freedom. Only do not use your freedom as, a, as an occasion or an opportunity to satisfy your flesh. See, you're not free to sin. Don't, you know what I'm saying? You can, but don't do that. He says, but by love, serve one another. See, we should be focusing so much on serving one another instead of trying to, you know what I'm saying, give in to the, focusing on, you know what I'm saying, free, you know, we are free to sin, trying to satisfy our own carnal, fleshly appetite. Verse 14, for all the law is fulfilled in one word. What is it? Even in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Because love doesn't work no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Verse 15. But if you bite and devour one another, you know what I'm saying? Slandering one another and coming against one another, fighting and you know, competing. He says, you should take heed that you do not be consumed one of another. We don't put be in fighting, okay? Verse 16. He said, this I say then. You know what I'm saying? In light of this, this is what I'm telling you. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the Holy Spirit. That walk, that word can be translated live. Live in the Holy Spirit. Okay? And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes, you know what I'm saying? We still have the, you know what I'm saying, have the carnal uh, nature in our flesh. Because in my flesh, Paul said, I know that in me dwelleth no good thing that is in my flesh. But he said, if you walk and live in the power of the Holy Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Exactly. No good thing. Verse 17. For the flesh lust is against the spirit. There's a battle going on, a conflict. The lust of the flesh want to be fulfilled is pulling this way. And the Holy Spirit wants us to be in an agreement and pleasing to God, and it's pulling this way, okay? And the Spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary, the one to the other. But when we try to, you know what I'm saying, live a life pleasing to the Lord with a carnal mind, which is enmity with God, they are in the flesh, cannot please God. You cannot please God and walk and live in the Spirit having a carnal mind, a carnal fleshly mind. Get rid of carnal fleshly influences. Okay, 
That's how you overcome. You can't sit up there and watch, you know what I'm saying, Empire and all these cardinal shows and stuff like that and think you're going to, you know what I'm saying, have victory. I'm not hollering, sister. I'm exhorting. Okay? Encouraging you. <laughs> exactly. I'm not rebuking you either. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Mm. Okay? Okay, let me tone it down a little bit. I'm just zealous about it. Okay? He says, uh, so we can't obey God's dictates and follow the spirit, you know what I'm saying, by giving it to carnal desire so that you cannot do the things that you want, that you would. It's verse 18. But if you be led of the Holy Spirit, if you follow the Holy Spirit in your thought life, in your, you know what I'm saying, following your, him in your spirit life, let your spirit man be led by the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Your thought life be controlled and led by the Holy Spirit. Your will submitted and be led by the Holy Spirit. Your emotions, not following your, your carnal emotions, but your emotions, you know what I'm saying, being led by the Holy Spirit. Your body, you know what I'm saying? If you know what I'm saying, present your body, dedicate your life unto the Lord daily, then you know what I'm saying, to follow the leader of the Holy Spirit. If you be led of the Holy Spirit, you are not under the law, okay? You won't be under the law. It is going to bring that out, you know what I'm saying? Because he goes on and down to say, verse 4, 24, and they, uh, no, I need to read it through. He says, now the works of the flesh are plainly plain or manifest and plain. See, this is the stuff that's keeping us from walking in the spirit and obeying God. Adultery, fornication, adultery, having sex with a married a uh, man or woman that's not your husband or wife, that's adultery. Fornication, you know what I'm saying? Uh, committing, uh, having sexual relations with someone who is not married or masturbating or any kind of, you know what I'm saying, uh, sexual activity, whether you're watching pornography, that's all fornication. Uncleanness, okay, that's the uh, same thing. Uh, lasciviousness. Now, these are the works of the flesh. Idolatry, porn, exactly. Anything we put before God, any person or place we put before God is idolatry. Witchcraft, trying to manipulate and control people. That's witchcraft. Hatred, this is a work of the flesh. You know what I'm saying? Too much food is gluttony. That's a sin. Okay? Variance, emulations, which are jealousies, envy and jealousy. Wrath, you know what I'm saying? He said, put away all wrath. You know what I'm saying? Strife, you know what I'm saying? We come to all this strife. God hates strife, seditions, you know what I'm saying, and heresies. You know, you got all these cliques, you know what I'm saying, like that, showing favoritism to each other. You know what I'm saying? This is the work of the flesh, heresies, false doctrines and teachings and stuff, doctrines of demons. He said envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling, you know what I'm saying, just having a, a good old shenig time, you know what I'm saying, Mardi Gras, oh my God, I'm doomed. No, you're not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just need to, you know, repent of these things. Okay, he says, and the such light of which I tell you before, he said, I told you this thing before, he, he go again, as I have also told you in time past, like I told the Thessalonians again and again, that they which do and practice such things will not, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. All who practice these things, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. He said, but the fruit that the spirit, the Holy Spirit produces is love, joy, yes, Jesus help us, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, strength under control, temperance, self control. Each one of us should know how to control our bodies in sanctification and in honor. That's what the Holy Spirit is trying, He's producing in us self control. But when we quench the Spirit and we resist it, then don't in the spirit. Then what else you think you left over to? You just left to willpower and for demonic, worldly, fleshly influences. And you don't have no no victory. You're not gonna have any victory in that. He says against such there is no law. See, but if you be led the spirit, you're not under law. There's no restrictions to these things because this is the product of the Holy Spirit. Are you talking from the book of Galatians at this time? Galatians chapter five. Yes, I am. There's no law. There's no restricted. You know what I'm saying? In obeying God, the Holy Spirit has helped us to reduce the characteristics, the character of God, the holiness of God in us. There's no restrictions. There's no commandment against this. You know what I'm saying? And they that are Christ, you know what I'm saying, have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. 
We have to put it, the affections and the lust to death every day. Take up our cross daily, die to ourselves, and follow the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit. If we live in the Holy Spirit, he said, let us also walk in the Holy Spirit. Be led of the Holy Spirit. It should be a lifestyle. Okay? Let us not be desirous of vain glory or pride, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen. Praise. I pray. I, I pray the Lord. I have answered your question. The Lord has answered your question, and I know He trust that He has. Amen. God bless you, Diamond minus the rough. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here. What is your name? Are you a born again Christian? Amen. We're about to conclude this uh, this series, this lesson. You should know how to control your body in sanctification and in honor. Now that I have taught you, you without excuse. You have knowledge. And if you continue to pray and ded dedicate yourself to your, your spirit, your whole spirit, mind, mental capacity, way of thinking, living and doing, your will, don't be rebellious and self-willed against the Holy Spirit, and your emotions and your whole body unto the Lord, and ask the Lord to fill you with his Holy Spirit and lead you with by his spirit in, in thought, word, and deed, mind, body, soul, and spirit, and truth. Truth, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, and you shall live a life pleasing unto the Lord. That he can say, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. Oh, no, I shouldn't come on this scope. Oh, you here for this? You know what I'm saying? God ordained for you to be here. Hi from Russia. God bless you, Julia from Russia. Thank you for being here. Are you a born again Christian? Is Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? Or are you, uh, God is leading you here for salvation. For God so loved the world, they gave it only by begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Amen. We thank God for giving us the victory through our Lord and James with Jesus Christ. I'm accountable now. Exactly, sister. And we're here to not only keep you accountable, you know what I'm saying, but to undergird you, to build you up in your most holy faith, to equip you to do the work of the ministry. Hi, Cheryl Ann, sister Cheryl Ann. God bless you. She from Dubai. God bless you. Amen. We got people from all over the world today. You're welcome. Give God the glory. You know what I'm saying? Pray for me, sister. You're welcome. We have only done that which is our duty to do, and we do it with pleasure. Amen. Praise God. Give God the glory. Amen. This is our pleasure to serve you. Please pray for my strength in the Lord. Amen. And for my family and my blood. God bless you, brother. Amen. Thank you, my dear sister. God bless you, your family, your bloodline. Amen. How are you doing in the Lord Jesus Christ today? Amen. We just concluded this message. Amen. You all can go back on, uh, click on my link. You do it with power. Amen. Praise God. That's what we're supposed to do it. You know what I'm saying? In demonstration and in power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. First Corinthians chapter two. Amen. Praise God. We're not here to lord it over your faith. Amen. But to serve you. Amen. As Jesus did. The son of man did not come to be served, but to, you know what I'm saying, to serve others and give his life a ransom for many. Amen. Greater love has no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. As we have therefore opportunity, we ought to do good unto all men, especially unto those of the household of faith. As each man hath received the gift, even so minister one to another, the manifold, very grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God, as though God is speaking. If any man serve, let him do it as of the ability uh, that God giveth and God of all things may be glorified. What do you think about Brian Karn? I think we should pray for uh, Brian Karn as we are called to do, to pray for all men, for kings and all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. Yeah, amen. Amen. I don't, you know what I'm saying? You know, I understand your question, sister, but we have to die to our opinions. You know what I'm saying? People say, what do you think? Well, I think I want to be in agreement with the will of God. That means I don't have a personal opinion. If I do have one, I need to I need to forsake it. You know what I'm saying? If it's not in agreement with the will of God, I don't have an opinion. What does God's word say? In 1 Timothy chapter 2, I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all that are in authority that we may lead. Uh, it's what God said. Exactly. Amen. Should people follow him? No, people should. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. You're only to, obligated to follow the Holy Spirit, to follow the word of God, you know what I'm saying? And follow our godly example as obedience to the Holy Spirit and the word of God. If I stop following the known will of God and the Holy Spirit and the word of God, 
you're not obligated to follow me because you're going to have to stand before God and say, oh, God, I was following the prophet, evangelist, pastor, the teacher, but he was going off into sin. I didn't want to be rebellious and disobedient. Well, if he's going down the broad way, which leads to destruction, you ain't got to follow him. Broad is the way that leads unto destruction, and many there be which enter their air. But straight is the gate, and now is the way and that lead unto life, and few that be that follow, that go in their air. Follow me as I follow Christ. If I'm not following Christ in the word of the Holy Spirit, don't follow me. And don't follow nobody else that's not doing it. Because when you do go against the leading of, God's and of the Holy Spirit and the word of God, that's idolatry. Don't worship them. Worship God. Follow the Holy Spirit. Follow the word of God. If they don't want to be accountable to receive correction, then that's a clear sign of apostasy. Don't follow them. Stop following them. The word says in 1 John chapter 4, I preach this message. I can go see it on can't stop me slash Tracy Smith L and T. You know what I'm saying? How to discern the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Okay? He says they are of the world. Exactly. He said, My sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. He said, they are of the world. Therefore, they speak of the world. And the world, listen to them. They give them credence and support them. We are of God. He that is of God listens to us. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger, they will not follow. And yet, they might be born again Christians, but some people apostatize. They backslide. And you don't want to follow them into sin? The words say, be not partaker of other men's sins. I don't care if they're an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, deacon, bishop. Don't be partake of other men's sins. Don't follow their example. But follow those godly examples. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm not rebuking you, sister. He says in Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter uh, 4, these things command and teach. No, let no man despise your youth, Timothy, but you be an example of the believers in word and conversation, in love and spirit and faith and purity. Okay? He said, you know what I'm saying, until I come, give attendance to reading, reading scripture, exhorting people to obey the Lord and to doctrine, sound, healthy doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given you by prophecy with the land on hands of the presbytery, the, those elders. He says, meditate on the word, on these things. Give yourself wholly, fully to them that your profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto yourself and to the teaching. Continue in them, for in doing this, you shall both save yourself and them that hear you. See, because we're following the word of God and the will of God and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If I err, you can come to me in love and say, brother, sister, whatever. The scripture says this, but you doing opposite. If I can't receive that, he said, go and, you know what I'm saying, get, get another witness. Yes, I'm on Facebook. You can look me up on Facebook, Tracy Smith, T-R-A-C-E-Y, or look up Minister Tracy Smith or Sower of the Word. My ministry group is called Sowers of the Word. You can send me an invite there. Also, uh, on Twitter, Sower of the Word. Yeah, I, I got to uh, learn about how to do Facebook Live. Thanks for reminding me about that, sister. Look up, on, look me up and follow this ministry on Twitter, uh, Sower of the Word, or look me up there, uh, Tracy Smith LMT, on Instagram, Sower of the Word, or as Minister Tracy Smith is there as well. Amen. Thank God for you. We thank God for everybody who's been here, who's participated, shared, invited people, invited followers, given hearts. Amen. Praise God. And so if you're not following me, click up my screen on my profile. Click follow. You'll get a notification every time I do a live broadcast. If you're able to make it here, we welcome you to be here. If not, you can go back and watch the replay. And also you will see my link to catch.me slash Tracy Smith LMT on my profile. You can go back there and get caught up with all my scopes. This is the, uh, the final portion of you should know how to control your body and sanctification and honor. You can get caught up with parts, you know what I'm saying? One, two, three, and four there. And it, uh, parts, I think three, uh, on it should be available here on Periscope for the next 24 hours. But all my scopes are there. And you're welcome to share them as the Lord leads you. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, send a copy, paste link. You know what I'm saying? Tweet it out, uh, text it out as the Lord leads you. Also, uh, there's my PayPal link. Uh, not that you owe me anything, you know what I'm saying? But love, amen. Most of all, we ask for your prayers. Pray for me and pray for this ministry and that God will continue to use me and empower me and equip me to give me everything to be a blessing to others and to harvest many souls into his kingdom. You know what I'm saying? But also, if the Lord put in your heart to be a blessing to this ministry, it doesn't always have to be financial. We also, we want your prayers first. You know what I'm saying? The Lord tell you to bake me a cake. Pray about it, obey God, bake me a cake. We're facilitating I'll give you an address where you can mail it to me. A pair of shoes, or socks, gloves, whatever. Whatever. Whatever God tells you.
tell you to do, like he told you, whatever he say, do it. So we're not just here to solicit you for money, but you know, that's just a way that if you want to give uh, an offering, a financial offering, you'll see my PayPal link for my ministry that, you know what I'm saying? Pray about it first, get peace about it and just obey God because God loves a cheerful giver. And our prayers that God will bless you 100 fold that have given unto us. Amen. In this marriage to me. That doesn't mean just financially. That means in your prayer life, your personal life, and your spirit, and your mind, your will, your emotions, and your body, and that God will supply all of your needs according to his rich and glory, both that he will bless you, that you may be a blessing to others, and as you have therefore opportunity to do good unto all men, especially unto those of the household of faith. Amen. Praise God. We thank every God for everybody, and we never want to leave uh, without pronouncing a blessing over you all in this broadcast. Amen. Praise God. And that's coming from Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20 and 21. We want to pronounce a benediction, a blessing over you. Amen. Uh, anybody got any other questions right now? I don't want to do any more deep, deep thought, theological things right now, but, you know, all hearts and minds are clear. Just want to make sure. Oh, I forgot to put my tea back on a cup warmer. Mm, got blue on there. If all hearts and minds are clear, lift up holy hands. Without wrath. Now may the God of peace, who brought up from the dead the, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord, equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ. To whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I thank God for you all. Continue to pray for my strength in the Lord. Lord willing, I will be back in the morning for first of all, pray for our prayer uh, and uh, intercessory ministry. 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. So if you're not following me, click and follow and you'll get a notification. If you could be here, we appreciate that you could be here for first of all, pray with Minister Tracy Smith. Amen. Praise God. You all continue to have a super blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ with your family, Christian friends, and all the saints of God with you. Amen. Praise God. I love you. Amen. I love you all. Let's see if we can go out with a praise. I, I like that. I think our music done went out. Yeah, for some reason it don't went out. I usually try to end uh, with the praise and worship music. Let's see. Wow, I've been going. Oh, okay, I stopped and rebroadcast. So I was like, it's two fifty. I'm gonna say I've been going since it was uh, about one. So that's almost two hours, technically almost two hours. Uh, okay. I'm gonna somehow periscope and stop. Where are they? Okay. I need your glory. Yes. Let's see if we can get that plan. Yeah, there we go. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Ernest Poe. I need your glory. I need your glory. Yes. I want your glory. Yes. Bless me and more of you. It's what I need. Yes. Show me your glory. And show me your power. Bless me and more of you. It's what I need. Yeah. Bless me, me more is what I need. Show me, show me, more. Show me, show me, show me, show me, Bless me, more Bless of me, show 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 me, the next uh, word I'm going to be bringing forth, amen, to build on this, amen. I'm going to be study, praying and studying over this, amen, for me, we're going to be studying over it and everything. And Lord willing, we're bringing forth. We may uh, start it uh, tomorrow at lunchtime. Then again, I might just wait till 
Still here, brother Shamar? Have a super blessed day in the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord willing, I'll be back in the morning at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time with, first of all, pray with Minister Tracy Smith. Amen. God bless you. I love you. If you're like me, I, 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 I,